Today we're going to talk about arm training. Believe it or not, we are going to deal with this topic in a hopefully respectful and dignified manner and we're going to talk about why and how to best train the triceps specifically. We're not going to talk too much about biceps today, aside from a short explanation of how things work and uh, an explanation of anatomically why we train the triceps exactly like we do. Now, we are going to train the triceps for strength because tricep training for strength is an important component in getting your bench press up and getting your press up. Larry Pacifico at one time referred to the exercise that we are going to learn here today, the lying triceps extension, as the fourth power lift. He considered them that important in training for a big bench press. But first we're going to talk about exactly why we want to train the biceps a little bit differently than everybody does and how that makes sense in terms of your strength program. <clears throat> Most of the time when people train the biceps you see them doing it this way. This is a cable triceps press down and what we'll normally see happen is the bar comes down to here like this and they'll start off at the bottom not moving the elbows and make a motion just exactly like this. The only problem with this is it leaves out quite a bit of the triceps function. Triceps are a good example of a two joint muscle. The triceps have three tri origins at different points on the humerus and the scapula. The long head crosses from the elbow up to the scapula. It crosses therefore two joints. The lateral head and the short or medial head do not. They attach at various places on the, on the humerus. But the long head goes from the common, or, the common insertion point of all of the triceps, the triceps tendon on the elbow, the olecranon process. And it goes from, uh, the short, the long head rather, goes from there all the way up to across the scapula. As such, it crosses both joints. A, a muscle belly that crosses two joints has got two functions, a distal and a proximal function. And in this case, the distal function of the triceps is elbow extension. The proximal function, the one up at the shoulder, would be shoulder extension. The triceps do both things. They both extend the shoulder and extend the elbow. Effective tricep training must therefore incorporate both of these movements in the exercise. If we were going to do a correct triceps press down, the way we would do it would be to include both elbow and shoulder extension in the movement, like this. The first part of the movement would be shoulder extension, and the finish of the movement would be elbow extension. And then I flex my elbow and I flex my shoulder on the way up. Shoulder extension, elbow extension. The opposite of that, elbow flexion, shoulder flexion. And a complete range of motion on a cable would look like this. Now this is a, a standard plate, uh, selectorized rather, selectorized stack. The stack is incrementally 10 pounds. That does not give us a lot of ability to incrementally load uh, a barbell exercise. So, without, you know, we, we've got these little magnets that we slap on there, and that's kind of cool, but we would rather have a barbell version of this exercise because of the, all of the advantages that barbell exercise provides for us. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to do the triceps exercise with an easy curl bar. Now, this is an easy curl bar. Everybody has seen one of these because there's 90 of them in every single gym in the world. Note the camber in the middle. What this thing is designed to do is uh, perform a curl with it. Note the position of the wrist in the curl. The reason this was designed is because it's more comfortable, but let's look at something real quickly. This is my massive, it's unbelievable bicep, and I understand that, please ignore that little thing on there. This thing is about as peaked as it gets, I'm sorry, but note that the position of my hand controls the bicep contraction. 
my hand is supine in this position now it is prone note the position of the head of the bicep when I pronate versus when I supinate the full contraction occurs at supination because the biceps are primary supinators of the forearm look up that anatomy as your homework when I train the biceps I'd like to be able to train the full biceps contraction we're going to go get a dumbbell now now watch what we're going to do this little 23 pound dumbbell starts in pronation comes into full supination and you can see the shape of the bicep change as I come up to the top and I fully supinate my hand with this dumbbell because it's not tied together and I can move it with the other arm and I can move it any way I want to you'll note that the position of the bicep changes with respect to me supinating the hand so a fully contracted bicep at the top demands a fully supinated hand position at the top so what is going on with an easy curl bar when it's more comfortable but it doesn't produce the full bicep contraction at the top. This thing was invented back in the 60s by some guy that worked for Weeder and I bet he never got a dime for the invention. But the fact that it does not work tri uh, biceps very effectively is irrelevant because it's a wonderful tool for training the triceps. Now note that all three of the heads of the triceps have a common insertion at the electronon process and that the elbow doesn't care whether I supinate or pronate. A fully supinated or fully pronated grip puts a little stress on the elbow from the distal side of the thing. So if we take a grip on our tricep extensions that's about like this, permitted by the inside camber on that, tri on that easy curl bar, we can take some of the pronation pressure off of the of the tricep, uh, rather of the forearm, on the distal side of the elbow without having any effect at all on how we contract our triceps. So this tool, which is utterly useless for bicep training, becomes an extremely effective thing that we can use to train the triceps. Now the other advantage to this thing is that like any barbell exercise, it's incrementally loadable. I can take that exercise and make it go up one pound a week if I need to and give myself a continuing adaptive stress programmed into my training to help myself get strong for the bench press because a tricep, powerful tricep lockout is an extremely important part of bench press improvement for an intermediate lifter. So. This is now going to become our triceps training tool. And another important factor in using uh, barbells for training the triceps is the fact that at the bottom of the exercise, we're going to show you how to do it with a stretch reflex to incorporate that perfectly normal stretch shortening cycle into this exercise to fix it up so you can lift heavier weights. Now, note the apparatus. Easy curl bar loaded with collars on the thing so the plates don't slide all over the gym and the thing is sitting at the end of a plain regulation four foot flat bench. Top of the bench is 17 inches, width of the bench is 12 inches, length of the bench is 48. This is your standard piece of equipment available in every gym in the world and once again we've got the commonly available easy curl bar. Now I've got the thing loaded to 72 pounds. It's a 10 kilo, 22 pound easy curl bar. The 25 pound plates on this thing make it weigh 72 pounds. When we do heavy weights on the lying triceps extension, we will use a spar. And I'm here by myself tonight doing this. Josh is running the camera and were I lifting in excess of you know 125 pounds or so, I would have to have a spotter because it becomes problematic to get this thing into position the way I'm going to show you with heavier weights. So the spotter would take the thing off the bench, stand up with it, hand it to me as I, as I do the exercise. We don't have to worry about that tonight because it's only 72 pounds and my elbow and knee hurt as they usually do. So what I'm going to do is 
do it the uh, solo way. Now, I'm going to get in position on this bench and I'm going to put this barbell in place over the top of my head. And I'm going to start with it locked out with my elbow in extension. Thumbs around the bar for safety. And now, first thing I'm going to do is drop the barbell behind my head as close as I can get it to the skull, but completely missing my forehead. We are not going to do this in the old skull pressure method where you lower the barbell down to the forehead and raise it back up because that would omit the shoulder extension function from the exercise. We want to include that longer range of motion. So what we're going to do is unlock the elbow into flexion and then unlock the shoulder into flexion. And then we're going to extend the shoulder and extend the elbow so that the movement looks like this. I'm going to throw the bar at the ceiling. And note that I feel for the bottom stretch right down there and I let the stretch reflex start the thing back up. I finish by aiming the barbell at the ceiling. Keeping the bar as close to my head at the top as I can. Dropping the bar down behind my head allows me to increase the range of motion and add that extremely important element of shoulder movement into this exercise. When I get through, I lock the bar out at the top. Never finish this thing at the bottom unless you want to tear something up. And then I'm going to lower it down to my thighs, put the thing back on the bench, just like that. Stand up. This is what this same exercise looks like when you use a spot. I'm going to sit down on the bench. Jared's going to come in and hand me the bar. This is a little bit more weight. So he's going to pick the thing up. He's going to put it in my hands. Now note that he's careful to put the bar in my hands where the inside camper is pointing down. This is the position that the wrist likes to use on this easy curl bar. I'm going to take my hands, cock them around like that, and again, I'm going to use both ex shoulder extension and tricep extension functions of the, of the uh, muscle belly as I do this heavier set. As it gets heavier, I have to concentrate harder on throwing the thing at the ceiling after the stretch reflex at the bottom. It's all right to move around a little bit on the bench. The heavier the thing gets, the more uh, out of control you're going to be of that accessory movement. Don't worry about it. Just throw the bar at the ceiling hard. And I'm through with the set. He'll step in, take the bar, I'll get out of his way, and then he sets it down on the bench. Sets it down on the bench. And that's what the weighted version, weighted spotted version of this exercise looks like. This exercise will allow you to use very heavy weights, loadable in incremental increases, just like any other barbell exercise. It turns the lying triceps extension into the fourth power lift, like Larry Pacifico is fond of calling it. So it can be a terribly important addition to your upper body training. Thanks for listening.